Hey guys, it's Melissa Catherine, and I am really wanted to talk to you about something important today. Uh, and that is actually sitting with your emotions, the hardest thing that is to do, especially if you are a dieter. Um, and this is really what I teach. So um, I had a beautiful thing happen yesterday with one of my clients, and she did this, and it shifted everything for her, and a good um, 30 years of pain that she had been experiencing from shoving down the anxiety and eating in response to it. Um, and you know, when we just eat to shove down a feeling, which is what happens when we overeat, when we emotionally eat, um, when we then a dieter and we restrict and then permit, um, and uh, when we binge, right? And so I don't believe in diets and I don't believe in deprivation. I actually take people through the uncomfortable stuff, the hard stuff that they don't wanna do because I want them to experience lasting weight loss and be free from the um, pains of dieting, from ever dieting again, and from food freedom so that you can truly live a life where you, where food is nourishment and it can be enjoyed and has absolutely no control over you. And um, also being in a place where you stay at your ideal weight and you know that if you gain a few pounds, you get it right off. How do you do that? So I wanna take you through this amazing exercise today. Um, what I often find is, uh, and again, this is something that our society really enforces, is we want that instant gratification. Um, the number one thing that you can do for yourself is actually be with yourself. And it is the hardest thing to do, especially in the moment. I actually had two clients yesterday in two different scenarios tell me that it was the most challenging thing that they've had to do. However, it was the most rewarding and knowing that they can do it and that that's it, that that's all they need to do, they will get to the other side. And they are and they have in so many ways. So um, I wanna share with you two stories that are really huge and then take you through this um, four step process that will change things for you. So stick it out with me because I know this, this video is gonna be a little bit longer than probably uh, the attention span for most. So stay with me, it's only a few more minutes. So here's the thing, um, and I say that about the attention span only because <laughs> we all do this. We're like, click, I didn't get my answer. Okay, next. Um, so, all right, and I'm promising you, I'm gonna take you through those four steps. So here's the thing, uh, one of my clients, um, she, is, uh, she had gone on a family reunion, came back, was triggered, and said, Melissa, I was doing great one day, and the next day, it's like I woke up, and I felt like I was back where I was, like, when we first started you know, working together. And because we haven't had to, she, we resolved a lot of this, right? Like most of it, um, she hasn't even been, her weight's been stable. Like we're not even, not even a thought. And this came up again. And that's what can happen when you've been an emotional eater and when you've dieted for a long time and, and food's been more to you than food. And so I say this because many times, not until people really start working and we start dissecting, do they recognize that food actually is very present in their lives. That is not just for nourishment. And it's not just like, oh, I like to eat here and there. Food has taken on human form for many people. Many of my clients, the, the majority of my clients, what we're actually doing is I am divorcing them from food. They will say that in working with me, it's like they go through an experience with food like it's a death, like a loss. Because food has been a companion. Food has been their comfort. Food has been there when they're sad, lonely, bored, overwhelmed, depressed, stressed, all of the spectrum of emotions. And when you've been a dieter, the minute you've said yes to a diet, you said no to yourself, disconnected, and created a relationship with food outside of yourself, outside of just nourishment. So this is the majority, this is a lot of people, right? I mean, um, the average woman spends 31 years of her life on a diet, so, right? So my client was just saying, you know, I went to this family reunion, I woke up this one morning and I knew I was back. I felt that pit of anxiety in my stomach I hadn't felt in a long time. It felt awful and I wanted it to go away. I went right to my refrigerator and then I said, no, Melissa has taught me, right? Hmm. She gets away from her refrigerator, so she goes and she's like, all right, I'll go run errands, right? So the more that what we resist persists. So the more she went and did something else, that feeling was still there because it was unresolved. The emotion was going 
no, no, we need food. We need our old survival technique. We used to eat to make this feeling go away. Your subconscious mind knows that. It's going back to it, right? So it's going back to it over and over again, and it's saying, okay, and it's going to keep nagging at you until you either sit with it, respond to it. The ego mind is like a little child. It's like, I want Coke. I want Diet Coke. I want Diet Coke. Or Diet Coke. I want soda. I want soda. And it's just going to keep going and going and going until you answer it. So it's just going to get louder and louder. What we resist persists. So she goes about her day. She runs all her errands. Then she actually feels physical hunger. And now, now her mind's going even more. And they're like, now you can really binge like we used to. Right? You can really eat, overeat. And go to all those foods that used to make you feel really good. And so she's sitting there. So what we did. So I had taught her this practice and she did it. So here are the steps. Um, she went and she said, no, I'm not going to do this. And she actually, and she's like, Melissa, it was so hard that I tried everything else. It took hours and hours. I did not want to sit with myself, even though I knew that's where the answer lied. Right? Like she and I talked about. So what I have you do is I identify where does it live in your body? Where's the feeling live in your body? A lot of people, it's in your chest, right? It's in all of your chakras. We've got your chest. Your, her, for her, it was her belly. It lives in her belly, and that's where it's lived, again, since she was like seven years old, right? When this whole like pattern with food started happening, right? So she identifies it's in her belly. I say identify where it is in your belly, and then I want you to breathe deep, at a minimum of six breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And as you're breathing, I want you to ask, what is it that it wants? The anxiety, what is it that you need? Listen for an answer. Listen. Allow time. We're not rushing through this. It's not going to be a bolt of lightning. God does not speak or source power does not speak in shouts. It's not like, it's because at age, blah, 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 right? Like it doesn't do that. Whispers. You hear whispers. And oftentimes we doubt them, but you'll get your answer. So identify where it is in your body, ask it what it needs, listen for the answer, keep breathing. Now I want you to go inside your body and I want you to put a vision with the feeling. So let's just say she said, it looks like a red ball, okay? This anxiety looks like a red ball in my belly. Okay, so now we know it looks like a red ball, so I want you to see yourself in your belly, standing in front of this red ball. And keeping now with your eyes closed, breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. Very deep. I want you to imagine that white, breathe, white healing light is coming in. And as you breathe in, you are breathing into that light. Breathing white air. And with every breath, the red ball is getting smaller, 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 and smaller. And you sit there and breathe until it's gone. And then again, you say, what is it that you need from me? And you listen. And for her, the coolest thing was that when she came out of it, she was fully reconnected back to her body because that's what happens. We get up here, we disconnect from our bodies and we're all in our head. And from our head, it's only fear-based. This is all fear-based, right? It's all coming from lack. This is coming from love. So you always want to connect back in here. So then what happens, right? So then she said to me, you know, Melissa, the coolest thing was I recognized I had been comparing myself. I saw my family and I compared myself with my sisters and, uh, you know, that I thought I needed the life that they had. And I compared myself with cousins. And then I really sat with myself and I said, oh my God, this is comparing myself. And I really asked myself, do I even want their life? Do I want their life? No. No. And comparison, right, is a lack of love for oneself. Comparison is going to lack. Ego, right? What we resist persists. The ego will not let go until it will nag you until you listen, until you actually have to shoot it down or you give into it. And what happens all too often is that we give into it. And then what happens? You give into it, you eat, and then you self-loathe, and then you put weight on, and then you keep yourself in that pattern. And then you feel bad about the weight gain. And then you want to eat because you feel bad about the weight gain and to beat yourself up and to stay small. Do you see this all, this nasty pattern? 
And it's so hard to actually, I get it's hard to catch yourself in the moment, but this is what I teach. And if you can do this, as both of my clients told me yesterday, they were like, this is the key. And I said, how long did it take you? And she goes, honestly, when I sat there, 30 minutes. 30 minutes to be fully recentered, empowered, have your big aha, your answers, heal yourself, and to know that you're fully in control and that you can do that anytime you start to notice that. So I said, the coolest thing is now the next time that comes up for you, you could go right into this. You don't have to spend a day dodging it and running errands and doing all your other things. You can now go and do this. So four steps. Where does it live in your body, right? What is the feeling, right? Where does it live in your body? Asking it what it needs. Six breaths, listening for the answer in through the nose, out through the nose. Then see yourself in front of it. Identify an image around the feeling. Then you're going to breathe in white light. The white light, as you breathe with each breath, you're healing yourself. And that image is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it goes away. Then again, sit and say, what is it you need? What are you feeling right now? Sit until you get your answers. Again, they come in whispers, okay? That is how love speaks. Um, and so listen and trust it. And that, my friends, is what will help you to heal your relationship with food, to lose weight effortlessly, and to be done with dieting for good and to keep the weight off. It will also help heal you from anxiety and um it will help heal you from a lot of things and really get in touch with where are your limiting beliefs and your blocks and how to get around them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below and uh, <laughs> have an amazing day.